So, you know, first off, thanks for coming out to hear me speak. I know it's toward the end of a pretty long day, and so I'll try to make the 15 minutes I have here hopefully useful and impactful for you. And like Josh said, I'm actually a medical director here at Roche, and part of my role is to help develop digital products in the oncology space. But I also wear a second hat. I'm still practicing medical oncologist here in California. And so I have a pretty busy part-time practice. And what I always do when I see digital solutions is, how does it fit in in my practice and how can it impact my patients? So I'm gonna to talk today eventually about the newest product that we have, Navify Oncology Hub. But before I do so, what I wanna do is take time out to frame you know, the challenges I have because that gives you a clinical context as to why I'm actually, what things I need for a digital solution. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use one of my patients, Carol. Now, Carol's not a real name, but she is one of my patients, and I've known her for the past year or so. And I think the challenges I face when I take care of her are quite emblematic of a lot of the challenges I see with all my cancer care patients. And to some degree, what makes cancer unique compared to other disease types is that not only the seriousness of the disease, but the fact that it's a continuum of care. It's not just happening at one point in time, but it's happening over multiple points in time. And so Carol's journey with me began about a year ago or so. When I think back, when I think back to when I first saw Carol, some of the frustrations I had is fragmented patient data. So when I see a patient, what I typically do is I go through the same routine. About 30 minutes or 45 minutes beforehand, the night before, I'll go look through the EHR system, try to learn everything I can about them to get ready for the next day. Now, the problem with Carol's chart is that she's got a lot of information. She's 75 years old. She's got 15 years of data in the EHR system. Some of it relevant to me, most of it is not relevant. But because I have a fear of missing out, I end up spending a lot of time digging through all that information, trying to find what are the most important pieces and putting together that mental map in my mind. That's infuriating and a tremendous waste of time. But the thing is, I consider myself lunky because I'm on an EHR where 80% of the information is there. I can only imagine for my friends who are working in healthcare systems when there's three or four different IT solutions and you're jumping back and forth trying to piece together this very complicated picture of a patient. Which brings me up to the next point, which is time. And you keep on hearing clinicians telling again and again, do I have time, I don't have time. You can say that's true for everybody, but I especially run from time to time. I don't take bathroom breaks, I eat my lunches and I chart as I go. And it's because I have such limited time to gather all that information to actually focus in on the patient. And a lot of times what I find is that initial consults, I'll have time because I'll set aside the time before, the night before to prepare. But on follow-up visits where I really only have 15 minutes to cram through each patient, I barely have time to open up a chart look through and see what's happening with the patient between the last two visits and propose a solution and a treatment plan. The thing that's most frustrating thing, I think, to me is that all these things take away from my time from the patient. I'm finding myself spending as much time looking at the computer screen as I am actually looking to the patient. And more importantly, the patient's like, well, I'm looking at the back of Dr. Lowe's head. What is he doing? They have no idea what I'm doing in that EHR system. Because I can show them the information, but it is so graphically dense that you know, they barely understand what's going on, or they would never understand what's going on. Now, one of the really cool things about cancer, and one of the most challenging things about cancer, is this idea of multidisciplinary care. And you've heard that cancer is a team effort. It, it truly is a team effort. It's not just me as the oncologist writing treatments and doing all these things. It's me, the radiation oncologist, the surgeon, the physical therapist, the cancer navigator, the chemo nurse, it's an entire team of people kind of trying to work together to take care of Carol. Now, in theory, this sounds great, and it's how we should approach something as complex as cancer. The problem is, a lot of times it feels like everybody is looking at a different piece of the puzzle, even though they're looking at the same patient. And the reason why is that the information that we have that's important is not set prominently, so everybody's actually looking at a different set of facts. This leads to miscommunication, and in the worst case, medical errors. And Carol's case highlights that. So Carol is kind of complex. You know, she had stage four lung cancer, meaning her lung cancer has spread to the brain, but she also had breast cancer. And this is the kind of patient that you don't manage on your own. You bring it up to a multi multidisciplinary team to ask their opinion. And so we brought her up to the tumor board, and the consensus at that time was, let's radiate the tumor in the brain, give chemotherapy to the lung cancer. About, which is a very reasonable plan. But four days later, I got a piece of paper 
saying that Carol actually has a mutation in her lung cancer. And that's a good thing. This mutation meant that we could give her a pill. And the pill was so powerful that one, she didn't need to do chemotherapy, at least for now. And then two, we didn't need to do radiation for the brain, at least for now. I put that information into the EHR, scanned it, and I flagged it, and I sent it to the radiation doctor so that he would know, so that he would not proceed with radiation. Now, because I'm paranoid, I called him a day later to make sure he had gotten that information, and he didn't. And I said, why not? I flagged it in the EHR, and I use a very robust EHR system. You can flag you and send these. He said, listen, I've got 70 to 80 pieces of information coming at me day to day. I don't have time to look at it and understand that this is important. So this is showing an example that, again, even if we're working within the same EHR system, the data is separate, it is siloed, people are working on different facts. Now, most of what I do for a cancer patient actually involves looking backwards at what happened to them. And so what I need to do is I actually need to create a mental roadmap in my mind of what are the things that have happened before in order to plan for what's going to happen next. And what makes it really hard in the EHR is when all this information is splayed in different places. You know, for me to try to dig through 15 different folders and files and put together that timeline in my mind, you know, Carol had a CT scan on January 1st, got treatment with a target therapy from January 1st to March 3rd, had a repeat CT scan showing that her disease progressed. All that actually takes a lot of mental energy and a lot of time to put together in the current EHR systems. So when you put it all together, there's a jumble of challenges that I face when I take care of Carol. And this is really difficult and really frustrating because I don't think we actually have currently a solution to address all these challenges, at least from the clinician's end. And so that's what Oncology Hub was designed to treat, uh, is to come up with a solution, not a replacement for the EHR, but rather a way to enhance the EHR and optimize it for cancer care. So we have this big dream, imagine if. Imagine if we could take all that data that's in the EHR, you know, Bravo's first step, you've gone from paper to digital, but the data is still disorganized. What happens if we organize that data into one single screen that was easy to understand, so only the most relevant information was there, and everybody could quickly understand what's going on with a complex case like Carol from the get-go? And that screen is not just for me, but it's for other members on the care team. So not just for the oncologists or the radiation oncologists, but for the other people that are just as important in Carol's care. The nurse navigator, the chemo nurse, the dietitian, the physical therapist. And then what happens if we actually made this easy for the patient to understand? God forbid the patient understands what's actually going on with them. This is the one thing where I actually will spend, you know, three or four minutes on a screen trying to point out different labs and all these things, and they still have this blank stare at me. And so I wanted to come up with some kind of software solution where even a layperson, a patient, can understand what's going on in what is a very, rel very complex uh, disease type. So how does Navify Oncology Hub do this? Well, what it ends up doing is it takes a bunch of very heterogeneous data using a variety of improperly standards and kind of collates it together into one place. And I'll talk about that in the next four or five slides. You actually see, finally, a demonstration of what I'm talking about. Again, the goal was to see if we can put all the relevant data together on one interactive screen, didn't have it navigate to a bunch of different places, and have it so that, again, it is the most relevant data that an oncologist and a clinician needs to make the decisions and can be easily accessed by anybody. No more needing to scroll through notes, no more hidden data that's buried in reports, no more issues with documentation consistencies because you're actually working on one easy-to-use platform. And no idea of multiple tabs and windows that you know, really drive me nuts. So it's going to be a little bit hard to see here, but this is actually a screenshot of several of the highlights that Navify Oncology does. What we've done is we've taken the most important variables for a cancer care patient, significant events that happen to them, pathology reports, imaging, the treatments, whether it's chemotherapy, radiation, etc., biomarkers in labs and response evaluation, and put them on this kind of multi-level timeline. And so you can see the temporal correlation between each of these things happening. And not only that, you can scroll very quickly in between using a scroll bar looking at different periods of time. This becomes particularly useful when you have patients like Carol who probably will live at least two years or more even though they have terminal disease. So imagine trying to scroll through each chart, trying to grab data that occurred six, seven, eight, ten months ago quickly. Here you can do it with the simple movement of a scroll bar. Another thing that's really useful, I find, with Oncology Hub is that we've made the data very easy to access. 
iSigma can hover over it and get a quick preview of what's going on with each element, whether it's a biomarker or it's a lab test. And if I wanted to do a deeper dive and look at a CT scan, I can double click on it and the actual scan report is there. No more having, I guess, to hunt and peck for information. Okay. One of the third things I want to talk about, and this is what happened with Carol's case, you know. She had a mutation, she had a path report, it came back showing that she needed a change in therapy. I sent it out to what I thought were all the relevant parties, I flagged it, emailed it, and I finally called the radiation oncologist, wasting about 15, 20 minutes of my time doing so. What we do here is we put it so that we can highlight the most important things needed to understand Carol's case. And we have it on this kind of highlight or significant events tab. So that anybody who opens up, no matter what, you're going to see the things that I want you to see. You know, there's no way to ignore this, right? Flagging it and having it buried within 15 rows is not useful. Flagging and putting it at the very top so you cannot ignore it is a useful thing. And finally, you know, when you know, one of the most important things I do as an oncologist, I guess, is looking back at the entire patient's journey and coming up with what we call an assessment of response. At the end of the day, what I'm asked to do is to take things like, well, how does Carol feel? What does the biomarker say? What do the labs say? How did the pathology report look? How did the imaging report go and the treatment she got? And every, you know, eight to 12 weeks, give an assessment. Is she doing well or not? And that seems simple, but you can imagine the amount of data I need to aggregate to make that happen. And not only do I need to aggregate that data, I need to see how it all temporarily fits together. You know, so for example, Carol had a CT scan, and she got chemotherapy, and she got another CT scan. That's not good enough. What I need to know is, when was that CT scan done at baseline? Did the CT scan that happened afterward happen two weeks afterwards or three months afterwards? Because if it happened two weeks afterwards, it's too soon. That scan is not relevant. And so you need to see a temporal relationship between all these elements in, under, in order to understand how you can really fully manage a cancer care patient. And that's what this is. We've put all the important information here, again, in a temporal line, the information that you need to manage a cancer patient. And we've also added this kind of really quick, easy function here. Instead of having to type up a note, having to scroll down at the bottom to read, okay, they had disease progression, we've made it easy enough so that with the click of a button, you can simply, using kind of a traffic light pattern, just say the patient had a response, no response, progressive disease, or had stable disease. And anybody looking at this can see Oh, just on color coding, Carol's breast cancer looks like it was not doing well, became green, staying green and doing well. Patient's lung cancer on the bottom, doing well, doing well, doing well, not well. Very easy to understand, no need to dig through notes, no need to dig through all these histories. And so, once again, thank you so much for taking the time out to hear me. Um, I'm open to any questions that you may have, and if not, please feel free to join us at the booth a little bit later on, and I'll be there to demo the product as well, too.